for joining us. Um, I'm Mike Morgan. I'm the uh, the chapter chair for APA DC. Um, really pleased to have you all here. Um, just going to share my screen really quick. Um, some updates about our chapter. Um, nope, <laughs> we'll go to the beginning of that. Um, so just in case uh, this is your first time coming to an APA event online or you're, you're just learning about us. Uh, we're a nonprofit trade organization that's built by photographers for photographers. Um, and I, I do want to mention one of the main things that APA does is advocacy on uh, on the part of the photographic community. And um, so uh, your membership helps to support that, um, protecting copyright and um, fighting for photographers rights. So uh, it's a very important thing. So thank you. Uh, we've got some upcoming events, a couple in-person events coming up. Uh, we're, we've got a new Focus on Wellness uh, series that we're doing. Uh, it'll be four times a year, we're going to be gathering and doing something for um, it's like the health conscious and um, and uh, just trying to get photographers together. We're starting with a, a group hike at Great Falls, so that's coming up on Saturday at 10 a.m. and it's being uh, hosted by Hanalei Lati, uh, one of our board members. And then we've got our coffee break, our um, in-person coffee break, and that's at the Kogod Gallery, uh, Kogod Courtyard at the National Portrait Gallery. Um, and that's just a, a casual get together. Um, so Saturday the 18th, we've got December 5th, um, the next 30 minutes with event. That's with Johnny Shryock. Uh, Johnny's a, a portrait headshot photographer. Um, he's going to uh, be discussing uh, where the headshot industry is going, um, how he got his business started, and um, uh, what his plans are for the future. So we've got some interesting things coming up. Then the 13th is our holiday party. That's going to be at St. Vincent Wine. Um, that's for APA DC members, um, plus the guest. We'll be providing food and beverage. Uh, should be a really wonderful party. I hope you can join us for that. Uh, also want to mention that the deadline's been extended for the 2024 APA source book. This is um, a source book that's sent out to creators and uh, to art buyers, producers, ad agencies. Um, and this is, uh, it's you get a free page in there if you're an APA member. Um, it's a, a printed source book um, and goes out all over the country. So um, yeah, that's another great reason to be a member of APA. But um, December, or sorry, November 27th is the new deadline for submitting to that. Um, also want to mention our benefits and discounts. If you're an APA member, make sure that you are taking part in uh, in all of your benefits. And um, and yeah, and if you're interested in becoming an APA member, if you're not a member yet, you can get twenty dollars off any membership level using the code DC one for twenty. And um, yeah, all right. So uh, now I'm going to uh, introduce our speaker, who um, I don't think needs an introduction. But um, uh, so Kristen is the founder and, and photographer of Her Helm, which is a portrait project uh, celebrating women boat captains. Um, it's drawing from her appreciation of maritime culture and desire to challenge gender stereotypes. She's embarked on a photographic journey to celebrate the women who have taken the helm in traditionally male-dominated roles. Um, and uh, we're, we're very happy to have her joining us. And uh, Kristen, I'm going to let you take it away. also want to mention if anybody has questions, please feel free to just put them in the chat and, um, and we'll be uh, addressing all those at the end. Okay, thanks so much. Well, hi, thank you so much, Mike. Uh, APA yeah, does amazing things, so I always enjoy seeing all of those events going on. I'm going to share this presentation and then go to my notes. So, hi, everyone. As Mike introduced, I'm Kristen Rutkowski. I'm the founder and the photographer of the Her Helm Project. And I'll uh, share a little bit about my business. I'm a portrait photographer here in the Chesapeake area. I've lived in Maryland for many years. I'm now in Virginia. I've also worked with amazing people in DC and Delaware. I make my clients feel like movie stars for the day. They're dressed up, dressed down. I create not only gorgeous portraits of them, but also a memorable experience that they treasure. I started out, as many do, photographing for super cheap, learning my skills, aspiring to, but not yet able to give a real luxury experience. I dabbled in various genres. I did some corporate headshots, architecture, nature, portraits, weddings. 
Uh, before long, thankfully, I narrowed in on the area that I enjoy most, portraits and headshots. I found some great education about creating a profitable photography business. Uh, that's important. And all that goes into creating my cost of doing business and setting up that, that structure. I developed a sustainable and enjoyable business model, uh, which is key. Uh, I actually really enjoy the numbers and the planning aspect of running a business. Uh, I, I, yeah, I like the the numbers and the mechanics of it. And it's kind of what I like about the photography part too, to be honest, the, the learning and the practice and the process of it. The art part is beautiful. I love creating the arts. I not just capturing it, but creating it. Uh, it is a, definitely a challenge for me, uh, honing that cap creativity I have to really make an effort and to get inspiration from elsewhere, from all around. Uh, lots of education, lots of inspiration to go into creating what I want to create. And then I enjoy making something that I and my clients love seeing hanging on the walls or in albums on in their house. So back in 2020, I went to the personal project event that APADC had hosted in, in the city. Uh, Matt Fracola had posted about it in the CAP Facebook group, and that's how I learned about APA. And that event was incredible. It was so inspirational. Uh, in fact, I mentioned it in the book that I just published. Uh, I shared about it with my photo club. I called out the incredible projects that I learned about in that meeting. So my mind turned for a while, thinking of what my next topic would be. I was already in the middle of my 2020 weekly self-portrait project, which was prescient since a pandemic happened and I only had access to myself for quite a while. I did a seasons project. Uh, I knew for my next project, I knew that I wanted it to be portraits because that's what I want my business to be. And there was a pandemic, so I needed it to be outside. Uh, so I'm thinking of different topics and different demographics. And my husband and I had a sailboat. We love being part of the water here on the bay. Uh, and sailing around the bay, I didn't think that I saw many women who captained their own boat. At least I didn't think that I saw them. Uh, so spoiler alert, I fell into the, the trap that all much, much of society does the stereotype that assumed that men captain and women crew. Uh, so that's how I chose my project. I wanted to find and photograph, photograph and celebrate the women boat captains. And the structure of the project, how I set it up, uh, it has a lot of personal portrait world and commercial world influence. It's not quite how I would do it now if I were to do the same thing with my intentions, um, but that's where I was coming from at the time. Uh, also, I was super naive about this topic at the beginning. I had no idea it would grow into something so large of what it's become. Uh, it was I just had it as a separate page on my main business webpage. Uh, I was also a newbie about the process um, of going about and, and creating the, the portraits, creating the project, um, making it a cohesive thing. Uh, thankfully, I did start out with a good description and a good model release. And I will thank, again, APA for inspiration and, um, and uh, yeah, inspiration at the courses in starting with those basic building blocks. Uh, but it's okay that I started out uh, from that that naive and kind of unprepared state. You got to start somewhere and it's better than not starting. Uh, it's been an incredible learning experience that I wouldn't have had otherwise. So I'm grateful that I did start, that I did create it. Uh, and I did gain some some of the business benefits that I had hoped for. I met a lot of great people. I expanded my network. I made myself known in an area that I wanted to be known. I had a lot of fun photo experiences, so a lot of um, a lot of work there was awesome, and I learned so much, uh, so so much. Uh, I did gain a few clients from it, not quite as many as I had hoped from the beginning, um, but I loved the, the clients that I did gain, and I've gained a lot of non tangible benefits that I really value. Uh, again, the great people that I've met, the experiences that I've had because of meeting those people. Uh, and then a museum exhibit, which has been incredible. Like I'm still a little in shock that 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 has been able to happen. And then, uh, so creating her helm, uh, the goal of, goals of it were to really promote these women that I met who who were in charge of their own vessel, uh, to recognize they have a place there, to normalize the fact that they are 
uh, captains of boats of all sizes and to celebrate the women who are there. Um, these women, they're living and they're working in a field that is predominantly white male. So I wanted to help break the stereotype that keeps them as crew to show that they are also the captain. It's a stereotype that I fell for, and I'm glad to do something now to help change that. Whether they own their own boat or earn a Coast Guard license or work commercially, commercially, they're in this industry just as equally as men. The numbers do still skew male, but providing more role models and working to increase female representation, we can move to even out that ratio. And then that in turn creates more role models and representation in a beautiful feedback loop. So that's what I'm hoping to do. Uh, I'm also proud of the particular eye that I bring to this project. I'm not portraying boaters to look all rough and seaworthy. They're not um, action shots, uh, nor my pigeonholing women as decorations on boats. I show there's nothing different about many of these women than any other full female personality that we know. And as a portrait photographer, I'm looking to show each woman that she is incredible just by being in her role. Uh, so what I'm showing is the, the grit and the beauty combined. And here is the beautiful grit. Uh, the Her Helm it, the project, it features women who captain any kind of boat, fishing charters, tugboats, ferries, sailboats, powerboats. Uh, the current iteration just ended and it's in the Chesapeake Bay. So every portrait was created here from the top of the bay down to the middle, all the way to the southern opening of the bay. And most of the women are indeed from this area, uh, from the Chesapeake area, the whole watershed area. The project also includes women who, boaters who have been traveling through, so, or women who've worked abroad and then returned home if they worked commercially on boats. Uh, women who worked in massive ships around the world, or they sailed large schooners in other waters. Uh, solo sailors making their way from New England down to the Caribbean, ocean racers, guest skippering on a world tour of the maiden uh, yacht, uh, racing yacht. We have boating educators. We have charter and commercial captains. We have recreational boaters, fishing charters, and fishing enthusiasts. And the breadth of the experience across these women, they all have a connection to the bay, and it was, has been wonderful to learn and to celebrate all these women. And then some kind of close-ups of some of the some of the women that I featured. Uh, Janet, she was the very first woman that I featured. And talking about a learning experience, the whole process for me was incredible of kind of forcing myself to go out there cold, meeting people who have no connection to me and say, hey, I'm doing this project. Can I include you? So I saw her. She owns a fishing charter boat. She pulled up to the slip at the marina we were at uh, one day, and I ran over and said, hi, I'm doing this project. Can I include you? And I'm sure I looked uh, very, very young and naive. And I'm grateful. She was very gracious and kind and wonderful. And I captured this photo and it really helped boost my confidence that, oh, I can do this. Um, this is going to be a great project. Um, so she was wonderful. And then Joyce, uh, I love this. Port. This is one of my favorite pictures from the projects. Just really proud of uh, my skills as a photographer, honestly, um, of creating something wonderful, posing her correctly, um, having the light there, having my own light. Um, she looked amazing. She looks happy and comfortable. Uh, I, I love this picture. Uh, so the sessions themselves, they're pared down from my normal sessions. There's no hair and makeup artist. There's no assistant, uh, usually no assistant. Uh, it's just me. Sometimes I brought a light. So I had my wagon uh, I pulled with, with my photo and my camera and my and my light and the sandbag. Um, and then we just spent uh, an hour, a couple hours talking and photographing to get to know them, to be able to tell their story as well as show them in their environment. And then some other women from around the bay. Um, we've got uh, Powerboat. She uh, is amazing working with environmental causes working uh, towards their captain's license, like Mani here, uh, loving the responsibility and the, and the feeling of getting to, to offer that, that charter experience. Um, women who are educators, who are delivery captains, 
uh kate here she is a really fun platform captain boomies where she's all about educating and sharing the boating world with anyone with everyone and women who are brand new to the boating world uh precious uh just out of uh out of her faith she decided the water is where i want to be so she went there um she got a boat she put work into learning um she's incredible uh, I mentioned the guest skipper, the world ocean racers. Um, Liz here has done uh, quite a few ocean races. Uh, she's incredible. She's about to row across the Atlantic uh, in her next race. Uh, so that's incredible. And then I mentioned the the whole length of the bay. So at the top of the bay, uh, Lauren here is from Chesapeake City. Uh, so even further than the top of the bay and all these driving around, going up to talk to her and, and photograph her. And then here, Jan is down in Cape Charles. She's a pilot out of Norfolk and, and Cape Charles. Um, so she's on the ships. She is ferried out in that pilot boat to the large container ships who are coming into the bay to help direct them into port. Uh, so just incredible, incredible women. Who have gotten to, to feature and then some of the behind the scenes we mentioned behind the scenes pictures um a few i've gotten this one was taken by the her helm captain uh by charlene <laughs> i asked her to just quick pull up a phone and, and take a quick picture of the ridiculous contortions that we as photographers get into um that's totally safe leaning out over the water with my uh very professional camera <laughs> uh but it worked out um and the fun part also of, of these projects, of this project, of all these photos, every session was different. The sky, the sun, the weather that day, the boat, the surroundings, the woman, it was all different. So it was really a great exercise in forcing me when I arrived to think fast on my, on my feet to determine how and where to position the woman for the best portraits to make her look amazing and make the background look amazing. Uh, it was a fun, it was a good exercise. And another behind the scenes, this one, I did actually bring, um, bring along someone to help out who was excited when Maiden came up the bay and they stopped at Annapolis. I reached out to them to ask if I could feature the skipper at the time, uh, Liz. Maiden, if you all haven't seen the Maiden Factor, the documentary about the first all-female crew racing yacht to, to race in the ocean race. It was the Whitbread at the time, I think 1989, uh, and how incredible they are and how inspirational. And they're now touring the world to raise funds for women's uh, girls' education around the world. And another behind the scenes that was done because Sarah is very handy at knowing how to set up a phone and just set up the timer to do self-portraits. Um, so this was on Kent Island. She runs a boating education business and her family runs the tow boat, uh, tow jam, uh, the tow US boat, boat US towing company out of Kent Island. And she does boating education. So she'll take people out to help learn how um, to handle boats uh, out on the water. Uh, she's incredible. And then from that, all of these amazing portraits, I created a book. I, like I said, I started out super naive. It was just a page or a one-off page on my website, eventually evolved into its own website, its own social media, its own following. Um, and then I realized each woman, they get a copy of their her home portrait to, to hold a print of it. But I wanted to have a collection and a tangible collection of all of the photographs together. So I wanted to create a book and I wanted it to be a gorgeous, fine art, um, wonderful collectible book. Uh, the I had a good idea of the design of the interior, not the design, but the layout of how I wanted it to look, how I wanted it to feel. And I worked with, I called her out in the slide, Karen Lomax of Lomax Creative. She is incredible. She was able to um, pull out from my mind how I want people to feel when they're holding the book, how I want it to look, the impression I want it to give. And she created this. Um, and I think it's beautiful. Uh, the, the book Throughout the pages of the book, it highlights every participant with their portrait and the paragraphs that I wrote about them in the first half. 
And then the second half of the book, it consists of stories, poems, essays, and paintings of invited writers and artists from around the Bay, adding their perspectives as women, mothers, environmentalists, workers here on the Bay. And it really helps make it a more special celebration to add even more depth to the story that we are telling about the women that live here in the Bay. And I'll share also, this was another learning experience when I got to this point of how to invite all these extra, um, all the other women to participate, how to invite them to contribute to the book, their, their writings and their art, um, what, I, what I wanted from that and what I could offer for that uh, and how to incorporate it into the book. And then the, the practical learning experience of creating the book of learning in design and editing, finding editors and printing and looking at different printers and what I want and the pricing, how to price the book, how, how many copies to buy, uh, where can I put it? All of that has been a, a big learning experience. Uh, and then not to mention figuring out trademarks, uh, expansion, what do I want to do with the book to just let it sit? How do I, how do I expand it? Uh, but it, it's been a lot of fun to learn all of that. Uh, and the book itself, uh, it is a work of art itself. I'm, I'm really proud of how it turned out. It's a great showcase to the women and the stories inside. And I love getting to, to like I said, with the portraits, to have created that, this, this work of art that I consider it. And then uh, just another angle of the book. Again, I love how it looks. Uh, some of the interior pages uh, I was, uh, I had set up, like I said, the, the shell of the book before I sent it to Karen, the designer. Uh, but I wanted the portrait on one side and her paragraph on the other, um, whether it's the portraits in the top left and bottom right, or the artwork uh, of the invited writers and artists uh, like the painting, uh, Women of Oak Harbor, or the poem in the lower left. I wanted lots of white space. I wanted to let the let the pieces speak for themselves, really, um, and give people a chance to really absorb that one piece as they're on a page. Uh, so that was a lot of fun to create. And then from the book, kind of coinciding with the book, uh, I reached out to the museum, the Chesapeake Bay Maritime Museum. They have been absolutely incredible. They are so supportive. Uh, that also had, of how I got there was a big learning experience. Being my own PR rep, uh, which I do not recommend, that has not, uh, I've, I've probably missed out on quite a bit by trying to do it mostly myself. Um, and I'm still doing the same for book events uh, to see about maybe a traveling exhibit or if other museums want their own exhibits. Um, but I did reach out to them. Uh, I, one of the just random emails around the Bay that I that I sent information about the project to, Jen Doldy and Jill Ferris, they work at the museum. They have been so incredible with bringing the Herhelm project to the museum's audience. Uh, to recognize this demographic, the women who've been working and enjoying the water for decades, women who are looking for a sense of belonging in the environment that they love. The team at CBMM, they saw the importance in that, in telling a fuller story of the people who make their homes and their livelihoods on the bay. The exhibit that they have, it's there in that space in that picture that's me up front giving the talk last month. And then they had a room for a selection of the photos about the event. Uh, not all 51 women who are in the project, who are in the book, um, they didn't have space for all of them. So that was also difficult to try to narrow down who's going to be in the exhibit and um, in their folk life exhibit. Uh, this, it's, it's a subset of the women who are in the project, which itself is just a subset of the many incredible women in the Bay, uh, which has been kind of one of my... Uh, almost regrets. I, I don't know if that's the right word, but I've wanted to be, there are so many incredible women that I want to feature all of them, but I don't have time. I can't feature every woman in the Bay. Um, so I had to um, set up uh, a way just to reach the women who I could um, on the time that I had uh, to get to include them in the project. Uh, a fun extra tidbit about the museum, uh, many featured artists. So, so I'll step back. The project itself is to celebrate women in a very male dominated, male oriented space, women in the maritime world. 
the museum exhibit, many, most museums, they, most of the featured artists themselves are male. So it was nice in kind of a meta way to not only offer a collection that celebrates women in non-traditional roles, but to also be a woman in that space. Um, I hadn't really thought about that at the beginning, even though I follow art activist Barbie and Gorilla Girls and all that, and I realize these spaces uh, need better representation in the world, in the art world. Um, it didn't occur to me at first that I'm helping these women in the maritime world and also helping women in the art world just by being there. So that uh, that was a cool realization on my part. I, I enjoyed that. And then uh, just ways to keep in touch with the project. Uh, whether it's through its social media, there are different events coming up. Like I said, I'm talking with Chesapeake Bay Foundation later. There are some women who are some of the captains in the project uh, work or worked at the uh, at Chesapeake Bay Foundation uh, in their education boats, working both as captains and educators, getting to mix those two roles. And some of the women in the featured artists and writers in the back of the book, um, they're also from Chesapeake Bay Foundation. So a lot of the women in the project, the bay is important to them. The health of the bay is important to them. So it's really cool to get to mix those two areas, those two audiences. And that is everything about the project that I have. Wonderful. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kristen. I think it's um, really fantastic that you've found a way to celebrate these inspiring people with uh, such an inspiring project. Um, such a, such a cool thing. Um, so, uh, I don't know if anybody has questions, please feel free to, to put them in the, in the chat. Um, I was going to go ahead and just, um, start with a, a question for you. Um, uh, you know, I was wondering, you, you mentioned that you're, if you did this project again, um, that you think your intentions would be a little different. Um, can you talk a little bit more about that? Um, how yeah. it's changed? Yeah, I, when I started it, the intentions were, um, as with everything with the business, it all goes back to what do I want? How do I want this to benefit my business of so really mostly it was expanding my network and hopefully finding some clients from it. And I found a few, um, it did expand my network. And like I said, the non tangible benefits have been amazing with the, the people that I've met. If I were to do it again, I would maybe be more focused either on not worrying at all about helping the, the, my photography business, my finding clients, um, like going to the museum has been incredible and getting to really expand the, the reach and the celebration of these women has been so wonderful. Or if I were to do it something even more, really just focusing on my business, I would probably set it up a little different. Um, there was no cost at all to these women to participate. And I don't think I would want that in the future. Um, I'm not sure. So I would, I would have to think more intentionally about what do I want from this? Cause it has taken a lot of effort. This has been three years of so much of my personal time, uh, so much of my personal effort, my personal money. Um, a lot has gone into this that I have created. I don't have any sponsorship or anything. Uh, like I said, it doesn't cost the, the women anything to be in the project. Um, so how do I want it to benefit and to make it, uh, worth it, not just in a non-tangible way, but also hopefully in a tangible way. <laughs> no, and that, that's an interesting uh, thing that you just brought up about um, the money that you've spent on this. Um, did you start out with a budget in mind uh, for this? Or at a certain point, did you have to say to yourself, I need to set a budget for what I'm willing to, to put into this project? When it came to the book, I did that. Um, and I, I have self-published the book. Uh, so all of that money up front. So really it was like, how much money do I have to create a book right now? Because I am I did take some pre-orders, but it wasn't enough to publish the book. Um, the, the big thing that happened throughout the project that I realized I need to set a budget was not a monetary budget, but a time budget. I realized how much it was, um, how much of my life was going into it. Uh, and I didn't have, don't have an infinite num amount of time, um, either my day-to-day -day time or length of time. So I set a goal of 50 women. Um, I think I was at like in the twenties at that point, but I wanted to, I 
had inklings of wanting to create a book and I want it to be somewhat substantial and very representative. And I didn't have as much of the representation in the project yet that I really wanted in terms of, of the women, of their age, of their race, of their backgrounds, and also of the boats, of fishing, sailing, all that, and the location in the bay. Um, so all these, those three areas, I really wanted to diversify. Um, so I was at like 20 is 20 ish women in the project at that point. And I have looking back at my notes, I had notes to myself, like I'm already feel, feel like I'm drowning. Uh, so I, but I did set a goal for 50 women and that, uh, helped me create an end goal. That's, that's a, a very good point that, uh, it's probably very important to decide, uh, when, when the project is done. And that's yeah. kind of my next question is, um, is this project truly done? Or are you going to continue to add to it or even expand it beyond the Chesapeake Bay? I would love to. Um, I set it up to kind of help me be able to do that. I uh, purchased the trademark. I'm going through all that process so that it can be a series. Uh, I'd love to do Her Helm Great Lakes or Her Helm West Coast or Her Helm Gulf Coast or something like that. Uh, I would need sponsorship for that because like I said, this one lasted three years, a lot of money, a lot of time, and it's in my home area. Uh, so I'm would love to to reach out and try to find sponsorship and a way to compress it in other areas. Um, but going back to the whole being my own PR rep or being my own agent, uh, finding those things uh, is a challenge. Um, so kind of a chicken and egg thing of, of finding the funding or creating the work art and then finding the funding uh, of what will be successful and, and enable me to do it. Uh, so I'd love to do that. But I uh, right now I'm just focusing and appreciating where I am now and trying to really celebrate all that, that I've created that the women have done in this area. Awesome. Awesome. Um, well, uh, you know, I'm also kind of wondering what are you considering uh, as additional projects that something outside of this? Are you, have you been thinking of other personal projects or are there other things that you're embarking on? I haven't embarked on anything yet. The The next thing that I'll really focus on after this is just building my business. Um, maybe a little bit, a much smaller scale project, um, kind of like uh, the the self-portraits were pretty small scale or the, the seasons I did one session for each season where I turned a model into a season. Uh, that was fairly small scale. Uh, so maybe something like that. Uh, will be my next endeavors. Yeah. Very and then cool. unless I expand on this, which this, like I said earlier, I started out maybe naive, but it has grown into something incredible and it's brought me along. Uh, I've kind of grown with it. And part of that was because in my head, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, this project is really turning into something incredible. I need to uh, up level myself so that I can do something to, to, to be worth the project, to make the project proud, if you will. Um, so that has, has been a lot of effort. Awesome. Well, I, it's really fantastic. And I, and I want to thank you for sharing this with us. Um, you know, not just for doing the project in the first place, which, um, it was quite, quite an effort, um, and an, I think a very important thing to do um and not just for you but um i think for the boating community um uh so i'm, I'm speaking to you from ken island actually so i oh, you know, awesome. so do have a little little bit of, <laughs> of uh, familiarity with that so i think it's really oh, great a lot of water that you did this yes so um all right and i and thank you very much for speaking with us for for sharing uh so much about the project and um and yeah we, we appreciate it so cool. thanks for having me. It's really an honor. Like I said, I'm inspired so much from APADC and all of its incredible members. So I'm really excited to get to share what some of that inspiration has led to. Oh, well, that's, that's really awesome. So, and it's, uh, uh, we're, we're honored to have you as a member and to, uh, to, to know that we had, uh, some part in, uh, your inspiration to do this. So, uh, we certainly put in the hard work on it and, uh, and, you should be very proud of it. So it's very, very cool. So congratulations. And um, and thank you again for sharing with us. So, okay. All right. Well, um, with that, thanks everybody for attending. Um, we'll, we'll go ahead and, and end our, our event here.
And um, thank you so much. Hope to see you all uh, at one of our next events. Okay. All right. Take care, everyone.